Hey, good morning, everyone. This is Daphne from Scrap and Create, and today we're going to be working on, um, or at least for this video, we're going to be working on the cover for the Well Groomed Collection from Graphic 45. And I've kind of laid things out the way I'm planning to put them uh, down. They're not actually glued together yet, but I wanted to give you guys an idea of what it looked like so you know where we're headed as we start to put all these pieces together. So I'm going to go over a couple of uh, things. So this came from the, sig uh, excuse me, the signature page and I fussy cut it out. And then um, I went ahead and just glued these two pieces down because I wanted to be able to move this in its entirety. And then uh, on the back, I did use foam. That's not something I usually do. And part of the reason I did it was I was thinking about actually double layering it using foam and then putting chipboard on the back just but I'm not sure yet. So right now I've got one layer of foam tape on the back. This is fussy cut from this pattern paper and <clears throat> basically on all the open spaces I just cut it out. Um, so I just took a piece of scrap, fussy cut this. This is just another element off the covers. Some of these I split in half, <clears throat> but mostly I worked off the signature page and found the little clusters of flowers that I could use on the cover. And here is another one. And then I've got this little piece and I'll use these to tuck in and around the main element here. So the first thing I need to decide is whether or not I want to have this double layered. So I went ahead and cut out um, some chipboard pieces to lay it on to see if I, I want it that elevated. <clears throat> Excuse me. And part of the reason I was thinking I needed to double layer it is I'm actually going to tuck some of these larger flowers behind it and I don't really want it to concave toward the center. So by elevating the center of this, it gives me a little more room to work with over in this corner. So the other thing you can do, and that's what I've done down here, is I actually cut the flower apart so only a small part of it is going to tuck under this and I'm thinking I'm probably going to do the same thing here just because the flower is just not quite flat enough. Okay so given all that you know where we're at so I'm going to take away my elements and make the first decision I need to make which is whether or not I'm going to double layer this. So I'm going to see if I can get this under without it and it, see, it's too much of a rise, so I'm either going to trim this down or add additional chipboard here, or maybe both. I think I'm going to do both. Okay, so I'm going to, I've already cut some strips, so I'm going to go ahead and put down some of the chipboard here. Save your strips because you may want to recover some of uh, the tape before we're ready to glue it down. Now I want to um, stay clear of this area because that's where this flower is going to go. So I don't want to double this up. This needs to stay relatively flat. All right. In fact, what I think I'm going to do is probably take a little bit of both of these off so that it's not double or so that I don't have foam tape here where I'm going to tuck the flower. So hopefully I'm on screen. So I'm just taking a little of this off and this piece as well. Okay, don't need that. I'm gonna take this part of this off. Okay. All right, so now I've got just a flat surface here. Let's see how that works. That's going to be pretty good, I think. Yep, that's going to work out just right. So, yep. I'm going to take off just a little bit of this chipboard corner. There we go. And then I'm going to, I, I'm going to leave. No, I'm going to take that off. I'm going to take this little bit of tape off on both sides. And it, it doesn't have to be pretty. It's all going to get covered up. What I'm really focused on is just getting the tack off right now because I don't want it to stick on my flower as I try to decide where to put it. 
So there's going to be a little bit of noise in the background. I apologize, but it is um, it's Friday and that's garden day around here. Okay, so that's looking good. Now I'm going to use the, this to cover up the rest of that so I can do a little testing without it sticking to my book. Okay, that's looking pretty good. Now let's see if we can get this flower behind it. And if not, I'm going to trim a little. Oh, I think that's going to I think I'm going to trim a little off. Can eyeball it. Okay. Let's see if I do that. Is that going to work? Yeah. So I'm just going to take off these back petals. And that should make it. Much. Yeah, perfect. Okay, so I'm happy with that. So basically, I just cut a diagonal and then cut the lower um, level off. So that's going to work out just fine. Okay, so the next thing I want to do is finalize this placement and actually attach this, this element. And it looks like that's going to be the spot. So I'm going to hold it in place, turn it over, and then glue it right where it's sitting. Okay, I'm just going to hold that in place for a second. I do everything with art glitter glue because I find that it holds up the best. Uh, some people like to use a hot glue and it's um, it really speeds things up, but I haven't found a glue that really is permanent. It gets dry and then over time um, it'll crack or just release from your paper. Oops. And it really depends on how you store your album. And I don't put them in uh, climate control. So, okay, I'm going to ink the edges of this and then we're going to put down the base. And this is from the 12 by 12 collection. And I tried a bunch of different papers. I really wasn't crazy about going with the black as the base. But this is so busy, um, every pattern I put behind it really took away from it. So you need something simple. And I tried the, the tight pattern from the blue and it just was way too busy. Um, it just was too competitive against the blue flowers. So that's how I settled on this one. Okay, we'll set this aside. We're gonna glue this in place. And just so you know, I've just got some tape in here holding everything up so this remains level. I just had a panic attack and thought I forget, forgot to hit record. I released a, um, a reveal yesterday for the new Stamperia collections. I went through each page. So if you haven't seen that, um, go back to our channel and uh, take a look at that. So those collections are really cool. I'm, I'm looking forward to, to working with a lot of them. Let's see. I think I took a note. We'll give you guys a heads up. Oh, I got rid of it. Julie was giving me kind of the order I'm going to be working on albums in over the next uh, several weeks. And I don't know where I put it. Okay, so now this is all in place so we can continue to build on top of it. Okay. All right, I like this. I'm going to add a few more um, pieces of chipboard back here to continue to, to raise <coughs> the back of this. <coughs> And I just cut as I go. These are just spare pieces left over from album covers. Let's see, can I get this up here? It's gonna work. 
I save all my chipboards for this purpose. And this will make the, the cover nice and rigid since I'm adding this these chipboard pieces. <clears throat> I'll take these off and then if I can get something <clears throat> from here to here, yeah. <clears throat> Is that going to work? It's a little too big. All right. You don't want to go all the way to the edge um, because the idea of elevating it is so that you can tuck layers behind it and if you go all the way to the edge you can't really get anything under it if you leave a little bit of open space around the edges it's very easy to tuck you know your flowers or anything else you want to add to it This needs to come down some. There we go. Usually this is done, but since I hadn't made the decision on the number of layers, I we're doing it together. Okay, now I need a couple of really small pieces to go over this. And the only reason I really want to cover it is I don't want the tack. going to leave these single layer and just press them into place so most of our volume is up here okay all right now let's go ahead and figure out exactly where this is going to go oops I see I've got chipboard exposed so I'm going to trim that off right here there we go problem solved and I've got a little bit of foam showing through there too I'm going to cut that off. Be careful you don't get your paper in there. Let me use my small scissors, that's a little easier. Okay, good enough. All right. Okay, and a lot of times on these little elements that are sticking out, I like to put glue on the back of them, even if I don't press them into place, because the glue, the glue will help make these pieces a little more rigid and less likely to be snagged. And then the other thing you can do if, you don't, if you're not comfortable with that is just cut that little piece off. But I thought it looked good, so I'm going to leave it there and add some glue to the back. Well, let's get the tape backing off first. And we're going to glue everything up and place it. <laughs> Doesn't want to let go. There we go. I think that's the last. Oh, one more. That's it. Okay. Now we're going to put glue on, on the flower, on all the chipboard, and then on these little pieces that are just sticking up. Because we don't want them to fall off. I'm going to tap that so it's a little bit thinner. There we go. 
Okay, and then there's a little bit right there. Tap, tap, tap. Okay. Remember your chipboard is very thirsty, so work quickly. actually put a little foam behind the rose. You could do the same thing here if you wanted. So this drops down just slightly um, because it's just got foam. There's foam and chipboard behind this part. Okay, and then I want this to be elevated because I'm going to tuck some good stuff behind there. I'm trying to decide if I want one of these to come across. I don't like it, so it's gonna stay like that. Okay, all right, so let's see what's next. Okay, so we need to tuck, so this one I cut in, in uh, half, and I think, well, was it this one or this one? I think it was this one that I'm gonna to try to tuck slightly behind this. I don't want it just, but I want it slightly off to the side. I think that's it, but I'm going to stash a few other things. So I know I want this piece right here. Now this is the one that I fussy cut and I'm going to stash this under here and because I've got the other elements under here it's probably sticking out a little more than I want it to so I might trim a little off the bottom. Okay. There, I like that. Okay, so let's get some glue on it and tuck it in. I've got this piece and I think and it's got one layer of foam and it's gonna fit here okay I think that's what I'm gonna do this is what I plan to put on top of this just to make it a little bit more interesting and I'm gonna put some chipboard on the back just on one side because the rose is elevating it so I'm just gonna put chipboard on one side it's still too big okay so it's going to go on this side Okay, this is another element that I fussy cut out. I can't remember where I was. 
was going to put it. I think I was going to put it here. That is held down right now just with foam tape, which means I can lift it. So I am going to trim this off. A lot of times when you're do at this level, you, you just start really trimming because once you get your glue on the back, you really know where your restrictions are. So I'm going to leave that there loose because I'm not sure I'm going to keep it there. I like that. So that's going to go down right there. This was something I wanted to use too. And I'm going to put that right there. This is from the die pack. Okay, and then I also had somewhere some uh, little, uh, here it is, got this little blue spiral and I think I'm just going to tuck it right here. Just makes it a little interesting. Okay, just adding some volume. Once I get this all figured out, I'm going to glue some of the lower petals down so that um, it doesn't shift around on us. I'm not sure I like that. Nope. This is the only thing I think I like, and I'm not sure. I think it might just be too much on this corner. Okay, so the next thing I want to do, maybe this will do the trick, just a little something, something. What do you guys think? I think we should do it. You need a little something there. There we go. Push that down. I want to do something in this corner and I've tried a couple of things and I'm not convinced I've got it figured out. That was one of the things, but that sort of brings the balance back to the center instead of all to the lower edge. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> I apologize. Sorry. <clears throat> I like that. We're going to do it. And again, these are all just fussy cut from various pages, for, for the most part, from the cover. I like layering uh, dimensional flowers and paper flowers. I think it's pretty. Makes it very interesting. Okay, I'm going to do a little, little bit of housekeeping so that my eyes aren't so distracted as I make the last few decisions about where I'm putting things. Okay, I've got this and I was thinking about putting that down there, but I'm not sure. Okay. All right. Now we have a, I've got my camera up just a little bit. There we go. Sorry about that guys. Hmm. What do you guys think? It's, it's coming along, huh?
Let's see. Okay. I like that. I think it creates some balance there and I just realized I hadn't glued this down. So let's get that tucked back in there permanently. <laughs> So when you're placing pieces like this, what you want to do is make sure you got glue on your leading edge, the edge that you're tucking. You can always come back and add glue here, um, but you don't want to drag it across your paper. So something to think about. This, these flowers are very thirsty too. The paper is very dry, so you got to work kind of quickly with that too. That's not the case with these. They're kind of uh, shiny, so that they don't absorb the glue as quickly. Okay, this is uh, kind of where we are now. No, I kind of want, you know, a break right there. So what do you guys think? I'm gonna go ahead and add some glue to the back of this, so. It's not floating. And I still have this. And these flowers are going to be in um, the material list in the description. And I've got this. So here's the elements I have left that I was considering. That, that that we've got some corners and if you get the bundle from us you'll have these corners as well and then i've got some charms i think i'm going to put that there and i think that's it because the rest of the charms are really not scaled for the cover but i do like that and i think i'll put my corners here so let's go ahead and get the corners in And you got to be patient with these because the glue dries very slowly on the metal. It's just part of it. And I'm making a mess, dragging my glue around. Sorry. Okay, I think I'm I'm not liking that, so we're gonna dismiss that. Get this corner in. I'll try not to make a big mess with it. There we go. And I've got some clips that I use just to hold it in place while it dries. We will let those dry and get this piece in. It doesn't seem to have a front or a back. I'm trying to line it up with the uh, actual printed image there. Okay, that looks good. That'll dry, take a few minutes. Uh, let's see, maybe up here, I don't know. What do you think? I kind of like the yellow uh, being exposed because there's, it's just pretty. That looks too heavy, huh? Maybe if I cover up more of the blue. I'm going to trim off some of this blue, see if I can't get it a little further under there.
I just noticed I clipped off the edge of that rose. I don't know when I did that. Okay, I'm going to cut a little more. Hmm. Maybe what I really want is just the yellow. Let's trim it off and see. So if you're not familiar with fussy cutting, the key to fussy cutting is one, patience, and two, move the paper, not the scissors. And the other thing, that, the other key to making fussy cut look good is don't cut straight lines. Even if it doesn't have um, a wavy edge, adding a wavy edge um, will enhance it. <clears throat> Straight, ed <coughs> straight edges are, don't look organic. So, <clears throat> and of course, I'm. That's assuming that you're not cutting a square or a um, geometric shape out. All right, now, kind of like that. Now we have the option to tuck this somewhere too. All right, let's see, take it off. I think it looks good there. That's what we're gonna do. So I just put the leading edge has glue because I want the yellow to go behind the blue. So I don't wanna glue it completely down. I wanna be, or no, actually, do I want it behind it? Maybe I want it layered like that. I think I want the yellow to stick out a little bit more like that. Okay, there we go. Nope, I am going to put it on top. Time to refill my glue. I think I'll go ahead and, yeah, this whole thing's going to get glued. And then I am going to go ahead and put this. I, it, we need something up here. The other thing I tried to do was layer some of these flowers on, and I didn't care for it. So the last thing would be if we wanted to tuck a dimensional flower behind it somehow, and I'm not liking that either. I think that's too heavy, so we're just going to put the paper in. And the papers, because it's on the edge, I'm going to make it flush. The edges are the most likely place where your um, elements will catch. And that, ladies, is our cover. Oh, well, almost. Am I going to use that here? I don't know. I don't like it. Although I feel like I need something here. <laughs> Sorry. <clears throat> Got a little patch in my throat. This would be another option is that looks too too uniform. Don't like it. Uh, okay, just toss it around some of my little elements. See if there's anything I like. I don't like that. So this is really the only thing that I kind of like. And because it's it's flat right here, this is the up direction. I'm not crazy about it. That's looking so busy, sorry. Maybe over here. Yeah, that's a little too bare. This is the time consuming part 
because it's a lot of testing. Do I like it? Do I not like it? I'm going to press it onto the cover and then I'm going to put a little glue behind that leaf and attach it to this chipboard piece. So um, I've used die cuts. These are die cuts and I use the flowers. Again, those will be in the description. Those are 49 to market. A lot of fussy cutting, more die cuts, a charm, and then this is the only chipboard that I used on the cover. Okay, and then I'm gonna add a little glue here, just a bit, and I'll attach it to this rose, and then it should be pretty secure. And that's it for now. Now, it's not saying I won't change it some more, but that's that's the bulk of it. I may stash something here or there. But for now, I'm going to call this finished. And if I add anything else, I will try to remember to point it out in the walkthrough. Okay, so there we are. There's our cover. What do you guys think? I think it turned out great. So I'm going to shift it around so you guys can see the dimension. So you can see how much dimension there is here. Am I in my own light? I hope not. Okay. That's the other reason I like chipboard is I don't like looking at the, the foam. But if you don't like looking at the foam, it's an easy solution. You just trace around it with uh, a Sharpie, a thick Sharpie, and then it'll be black and it won't appear so strongly when you uh, look at the sides. But that's not really what people look at. This is what they look at. Okay, that's it for now. Be back soon. Good morning, everyone. It's Daphne, and we are going to continue working on uh, the inside liners and the rest of the outside cover for the well-groomed album. So I'm going to go ahead and open it up, and we're going to get started on the inside. I don't have my outside papers ready just yet, but I do have my inside liners ready, and they are going to be the blue patterns. This uh, has a direction in it. There's some words in the background, so make sure you've got it uh, going the right orientation. And let me tell you what I did here. These are, and you're going to have to trim to fit just to make sure it's perfect here. But each one of these is five. I started with five and a quarter for both sides and then trimmed it. And then what I wound up with was five and one eighth and five and one eighth. And that wound up being perfect and I could join them in the middle. And I just used some regular scotch tape. You can probably see it shining right there to join these two pieces together and I did the same thing on both sides and now I'm just making sure the width is correct and it looks good so let's see <laughs> if you can hear that rah, 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 rah in the background that's not oh. <laughs> okay so we'll get this down and then we're going to add an element that's going to soften the join. Um, and I'm going to add, uh, well, you'll see in just a moment. We'll get this down and then I'll go over that and then we'll do the other side. all into place. I want to press, um, because I didn't line this and make this all one level, I'm uh, just making sure that it's contacting all the way around. You can add, you can trim out a piece to fit there if you like. I'm keeping this simple because some of the pages are pretty complicated, um, so I didn't really have enough paper to do like a pocket here. Okay, so now we're going to add this strip. And then the last thing I'm going to do is add this little paw print right here. Okay. And the paw print came from, just a moment. This cut apart page. So it came off this edge. Um, you can see there are bigger paw prints on this side. There was an edge on this side. That's where I trimmed it off. I had two of those, so I trimmed one from each sheet. And that's what it's going to look like when it's done. 
So the first thing I'm gonna do is, is center uh, the paws on here. Then I'm gonna measure it and trim it to fit because it's actually a little bit too long. Okay. I'm just looking at the pattern to make sure if it's directional that I get it the right way and I don't think it is. It's just swirls and flowers. So the flowers can go up or down and whatever I decide, I just want to do the same thing for both. Okay. And it's just preference because it's not directional. I'm just eyeballing the center. Oh, I'll tell you how wide that strip is in just a moment. I'm gonna nudge that over just a little bit. Perfect. I'm gonna press it into place. Okay, then the last layer is the black liner. Oh, the blue is from the patterns and solids. These strips are one and a quarter inch wide. Okay. All right, now I'm gonna lay it in and we're gonna mark it on both sides and trim that last tab off ink it and glue it down. Okay, there we are. What do you guys think? I think it looks good. The, the black looks kind of bold, but when we have the other pages in here, it'll, it'll look fine. Okay, we're just going to repeat this process for the front of the cover. The front inside liner, that is. I said that wrong. I think I'm going to start by doing the blue on the black first. And I think I made my black piece a little too narrow, so I'm going to trim out another piece. All right, I did that, so let's go ahead and get this layered. straight so I'm going to use my uh, knife to straighten it out. As you can see it's much wider up here. as soon as I locate them. <laughs> I'm 
what did I do with it? I'm not sure. All right, well, we'll set that aside and get this in. Okay. Just want to verify I've got the orientation correct. It's right. Dry fit real quick. So our last chance to trim. We're making sure that we are clear of the hinge area. dragging around on my desk, but I need to clean that real quick. Uh, sorry about that. I don't know what that was. Oh, I know what it is. It's these little <laughs> stamens. Um, they have like a chalky texture. That's what it was. Something to keep in mind. As you're dragging yours around your desk, that's probably what it is. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and trim this to fit and then I'm gonna locate the, um, here it is. It was blending in with my computer. I'm gonna add it first because all three of these need to be trimmed together. Now, I'm gluing the whole thing down, but if you want, you could just glue the two edges down and make this a belly band, too. I'm not doing that, and the reason I'm not doing it is I know I'm not going to have enough paper to put an insert in there. Um, which is not a big deal, but um, you could use a coordinating cardstock, or if it's uh, just black cardstock with photos on it, would be fine, too. Okay, I'm going to trim this. We'll ink it, and it's all ready to go. break, measure out my outside papers, and I'll be right with you. Okay, I've chosen these patterns to go on the back. I'm going to put my tape back on the inside to sort of level things out for me. It makes it a little easier. Okay, um, I'm going to trim these two pieces to fit. This is five inches. <clears throat> Okay. 
So the next thing I'm going to do is lay down my yellow strip, which is, uh, let me tell you what it is. It's two inches wide. <clears throat> Okay, then this is the last piece. And we're going to trim it to fit. Let's see how we did. I think I'm gonna take a little more off. It's very close to the edge here. Okay, one more time. Looks good. Let's ink it and glue it down. And then the last thing is our spine, which is gonna be the same yellow paper. Nice, nice. Remember to pay attention to your direction. There's words in the background. Okay, I'll be right back. I'm gonna add a couple of the dye elements here. I like using the dyes on the back because um, they're flat. <laughs> So when you open your book up, um, it'll remain relatively flat. And even though we've embellished the front, it's not too bulky. So I don't, I haven't chose these, so we're gonna mess around with this together and figure something out. Ooh, I kind of like that. Bringing the paws back in from the front. <clears throat> I like that too. Let's do this. I like it off center a little better. Let's see. Okay, I'm gonna frame her in black and I think this is the two things I'm gonna do. And I might do a banner if I have one that color-wise works. I 
I think this just disappears. So let me put some black behind this and see if it's gonna work. Okay, while I was away and putting a black cardstock on the back of these, I kinda went a different direction. So I like these two, they're die cuts. I paper back them and I like that they nest like this. So I'm going to stack them one on top of the other. <clears throat> and it's nice and flat, like I said, so you don't have to worry too much about dimension. Dimension. <clears throat> I thought I said that wrong. It sounded funny. I thought I said dementia. <laughs> I think I need another cup of coffee. Okay. I like it. It's nice and simple. This was a tough pattern to work with. I think it's pretty, but it's hard to put stuff on top of it, so. And this is unusual that I'm centering this. I usually like to do things slightly off-center, but it is a little bit off-center coming up and down. So there, I, I, I worked it in. <laughs> and I looked at some banners, and I just think I, it looks like I'm trying too hard. So I'm going to leave it as is. Um, I may look at this one more time. Um... But I think we're done here. Okay, that's it. So we do have one more thing to do, and that's the spine. And I have my paper right here. I just need to trim it to fit. <clears throat> I think I've got the right height. I can. I feel like I'm losing my voice. <clears throat> Right, let's get some ink on it and then we've <clears throat> we've done uh we were finishing up the cover liners. The only thing we haven't done that I normally include in this video is installing the pages, but this video is already so long um because it took so long to put the cover together. I'm gonna skip the installation. Um you guys can always reference the base album build for the installations of the pages. Either that or I'll cover it um, with page 8 or something like that. But uh, I think I'm just going to skip it. You guys have done enough of these. You know how to put your pages in. Just remember to stack your pages in order before you get started and that make sure that your book is um, oriented correctly and you know which side is up and which side is down so you don't put your pages in upside down. Which I have done. And it's maddening. But you can solve it if you put them in with tape. You can use your undo. And it does take some patience. <clears throat> okay. I may put some charms on here. And if I do, I will um, place my uh, jump ring with the brad on it um, underneath another element. But I haven't decided yet. Some of the charms are really cute, but uh, not sure what I'm doing there yet. So that's it. So let's take everything out. You guys can take a look at my messy desk. Okay, there's our cover, spine, back, and then our inside liners. Okay, all right, that's it for now.